2010 17-inch MacBook Pro LCD replacement. Start off by shutting down and flipping over your MacBook. Remove the cover that's fastened with 10 Phillips head screws. Remove the 7 Phillips head screws that are short first, starting in the top left and going around the contour of the MacBook. Now the 3 long Phillips head screws. Lift and remove the cover. Begin by disconnecting the battery first. LCD assembly removal. Disconnect the eyesight cable. Gently pry your screwdriver underneath and get a good grip on the cable. And just pull it to your left. There might be a small plastic safety clip connected to it. Go ahead and remove that. Remove two covers. One that's covering the Bluetooth and one that's covering the eyesight bracket. We'll be disconnecting the Bluetooth antenna first. Go ahead and pry underneath it with your screwdriver gently popping it up and out of its socket. You can now disconnect the Bluetooth data cable. Now let's remove the two Phillips head screws that are holding in the eyesight camera bracket. Once those two screws are out of the way, we can go ahead and remove the bracket. Let's disconnect the LVDS cable next. Gently pry up on the latch lock. Now that it's unlocked, you can pull it back and it'll slide out of the socket. Now let's remove the two Phillips head screws that are holding in the LVDS bracket. The second screw you can unscrew but leave it in the bracket. This will be easier to track it. Remove the bracket. Go ahead now lift and open up the MacBook and hang it over the table ledge. Remove the three T6 screws that are holding in the left hinge. Remove the three T6 screws that are holding in the right hinge. You can now gently pry upwards and remove the LCD assembly. Before we begin, please note the following information. Do not remove the gasket surrounding the glass panel. As other guides have stated that you should remove it because it might melt by using the heat gun, this is incorrect information. When going to remove the gasket, it is most likely that it's going to rip and you will not be able to reinstall it. To go around this, go ahead and use the heat gun further away from the gasket and closer towards the middle of the screen to heat up the glass. This will allow you to remove the glass with the gasket intact. The next thing to note is do not use an eye sesame tool or any kind of sharp metallic tools for this procedure. Please use a guitar pick or any kind of plastic prying card. Please note that in this video we are removing a cracked glass panel. If your panel is intact, 
Follow the same steps but slower as you can crack your intact glass if you are too rough. Go ahead and start off by applying the heat gun all the way around the glass. Make sure to go all the way around and apply about 5 to 8 minutes worth of heat. You can go ahead and start prying into the glass now. Reapply heat as needed. Once you started to pry into the glass, go ahead go around the first half of it and try to pull it up and off. There will be shards that are left over from the cracked glass. Go ahead and pick out those shards with your tool. Be very careful as you can easily cut yourself. After all the glass pieces have been removed, pick up the LCD assembly and shake off all the glass particles. LCD removal. Begin by removing the component cover by sliding it to the right and pulling it up from the middle. It should come right out. Remove the four Phillips head screws at each corner of the LCD unit. Lift up the assembly and separate the LCD unit from the assembly. Gently pry it out, but just remember it's still connected to the LVDS cable. Go ahead and flip it over and expose the cable, gently working it out. Disconnect the LCD side LVDS cable by unlocking the latch first and then pulling it out. LCD reinstallation. Reconnect the LVDS cable. Lock in the LVDS cable latch. Make sure it's firmly locked because when you turn the screen, it can pop out. Place the tape back on. Flip it back over gently. Do not move it around too much. Turn it around and lay it down into position. At the same time, try to work the LVDS cable through the socket. Insert the bottom feet into the slots in the case assembly. These bottom feet have the holes for the screws. Gently pry in the left foot first, but don't put it in all the way, just start it into the slot. Now the right foot. Once aligned, the LCD should drop right into the assembly. Go ahead and reinstall the four Phillips head screws on each corner.
place the component cover back over the components. Having it a little slightly to the right helps. Make sure all the cables are tucked in and are not preventing the component cover from clicking in. Once it's clicked in, just slide it to the left. Apply alcohol to remove prints and stains. Apply the alcohol onto the rag. This can be a microfiber or a regular cloth rag. Allow it to sit for a few seconds and then wipe it off. Place the new glass and align it before pressing in. Once the glass is aligned, go ahead and start applying gentle pressure along the edges of the glass. It is very important that you do not press too hard because applying too much pressure can crack the new glass. LCD assembly reinstallation. Go ahead and place the assembly in. Fasten the assembly with one middle T6 screw on each side. This will allow the LCD assembly to be aligned properly. Make sure that you're not jamming in the Bluetooth antenna cable. It's the blue cable. Go ahead and reinstall the four remaining T6 screws. Lift, flip, close the MacBook. Put it into position. Now let's reinstall the LVDS hinge. Make sure that the LVDS cable is underneath the hinge. Now secure it with two Phillips head screws. The one screw we left in the hinge and then the next screw that's part of the LVDS cable. Go ahead and reconnect the LVDS cable, gently sliding it into the socket. Be very careful when you're doing this as you can damage the socket. Go ahead and lock the LVDS cable. Do not touch any of the components with the screwdriver. Reinstall the EyeSight cable bracket. Place it in making sure that the EyeSight cable is underneath the bracket. Now secure it with two Phillips head screws. Make sure that the cable loop is looped through and secure onto the bracket. Make sure to loop through the Bluetooth antenna cable as well. Go ahead and reconnect the Bluetooth antenna by holding it over the socket and pressing it in. Now reconnect the Bluetooth data cable.
trays down and tuck in the eyesight camera cable. You can now reconnect the eyesight camera cable. Go ahead and gently slide it into the socket. Place the covers back on, one over the eyesight cable, one over the Bluetooth, and one over the eyesight cable bracket portion. You can now reconnect the battery. Gently slide it into the socket. Look down and get a better angle as you need to make sure that this goes in correctly. Place the cover back on. Reinstall the three long Phillips head screws first. Then reinstall the seven short Phillips head screws. No resets are needed, you're all done.